everybody. Welcome to Get the Point. I'm so happy you're here. Really excited to share some strategy with you. And I have a phenomenal guest tonight. I have a guy who is absolutely dominating singles, mixed, and men's. And tonight we're going to look at two gold medal matches. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jocelyn DeVille. Jocelyn, how are you, buddy? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you so much for having me, Dave. I am thrilled to have you. We've got you playing and creating so many fun and interesting shots that I know our viewers are going to, number one, learn how to add to their game, and number two, just have their jaws hit the ground. So <laughs> we're going to be right back, dive into the first point right after these words from our sponsors. <laughs> Welcome back to Get the Point. I'm Dave Fleming. I'm here with Jocelyn, and we are ready to dive into our first point. Here we are at the gold medal match at the APP Hilton Head event. And the players on the court that you see, we've got Kyle Yates in the white hat. His partner is Steve Deacon in the black hat, looking backwards. On the far side, we've got, yes, that's a full arm showing. One sleeve down, one sleeve up, Pat Smith, and then our guest, Jocelyn DeVille, in his beautiful blue. He's got his hat on. He's got his Vulcan paddle. He is ready to play. And Jocelyn, this first point is all about your backhand and your power. And the one thing as this point progresses, I think one of the keys to your game is your deep slice backhand return that makes the third shot more difficult just walk us through this point and we'll look at it a couple of times here okay let's do it so here as you can see cal served quite deep so my my main purpose is to play deep as well to not uh to force him to have a tough third shot and i can keep him deep um here and you can see i have an opportunity to be aggressive uh, the ball is high, and I, I choose to to go back at Cal and not at Steve for the reason that um, I know uh, Cal is not in a great position at that moment, uh, and Steve is really expecting me to attack him. So I'm going back to Cal to put if to put him off balance one more time and expect an easier ball for me to attack and go down at the feet at Steve. Um, and uh, again, like Cal was trying to. Uh, to defend, to reset, and he, he was missing the reset a bit too high. So I ke kept going back cross court uh, to, to put him in a more awkward position over and over and uh, again, to the point where I could shift and hit with back and down the middle and, and force him to, uh, to have a tougher shot. So. so let's talk about a couple of choices you made in this, in this point. Mm -hmm. uh, on this drop right here, you actually let it bounce, which gave Kyle a chance to come in. Why, when you're at the kitchen line, would you make that decision? Um, I made that decision because I didn't think um, I was going to be able to, to hit a good shot with not letting it bounce. So I was probably going to get it if I were to reach but unfortunately, I think I would have missed in the net because I, it would be a stretch. So I'd rather let it bounce, see the players are there moving. Uh, you know, I have a quick split second to take uh, the information whether Steve is shifting right or is Cal, you know, really closing the net or not. So this is what I pay attention to. And 
the time that the ball bounces, I can see what what the other players are doing and take a good decision from there. So I think that's an important point that you're making there, which is if you overreach into the kitchen, you may A, make a mistake, but secondly, not have as attackable a ball as if you let it bounce and let that bounce actually come up. And as you said, survey the scene and then pick a spot. So yes, you did give up a little territory there, but you still were able to keep the attack going. And the other thing I like that you did, and I'd love to hear whether that was purposeful or just filling the gap, but a lot of people will defend only on one side of their body. So Kyle's defending the backhand, he's defending the backhand, try and work his way up. And as you turn your body to be ready to do that, your actual winner ends up on his forehand side. Was that something you did purposefully? It's certainly something I encourage people to practice. Talk to me about that choice. Yeah, um, so again, I have two options. I can either go back to his back end or find the middle to his forehand. Uh, I like the options to go to the middle forehand because again, Cal is trying to cover more his left side and and Steve is supposed to co- is supposed to cover the middle, but he, he's so close to the net that it's a tricky shot for him to cover, and he still have to cover the right side. So it's it's really an awkward position for both of them. That's why when I go there to the middle and it's to the forehand, it's forcing to switch from this position to the other position. And if Steve stay is able to take the back in, then. Patrick will get involved and have normally an easier put away as well. So yes, it was a, it's, it's a shot that I like to do, but I also like to mix that. So people don't start reading me and knowing what I'm doing. Um, so I, I usually go cross courts and push them further to open the court more. But um, in the case of Steve and, and uh, Cal, I know Cal is very athletic. He, he moves very well. So uh, if I do the same thing over and over, he, he started reading me and then he, he's very, very good at that. So always try, I always try to keep him thinking and, um, and making the ball move as much as possible. So I think viewers, when you look at this point, the battle to get up there that Kyle was involved in and you know the words that Jocelyn used was, how can I keep them Guessing, how can I keep them uncomfortable? That's what he's trying to do. And by varying the position of his attack, he was able to do that and win the point. All right, let's watch another point. Here's that big slice backhand. Take us away here. Yeah, again, um, I'm slicing a deep middle uh, to, uh, to force them uh, to take the decision who is going to take the third shot. And then um, Steve had a great third shot and we are in the battle in the kitchen. Um, he, from here, I'm trying to move the ball around again and making sure they don't get um, in, into a routine where they don't miss dinks. So I'm just moving the ball around right to left and waiting for the right opportunity to be aggressive. So why don't you talk to our viewers about what you just said, not letting them get comfortable as we watch this point again. Yeah, again, like um, Steve and Cal are two great players. Uh, they, they know the game very well. And if you don't change the, pa- the patterns, they just become very, um, very good and almost unbeatable, I would say, because they know the game so well that you, uh, you can't challenge them anymore. So my goal here, and they're picking a lot at me, so I'm just moving the ball around and trying to... Uh, show them something different every time so they can pop the ball up and I can be aggressive and take the opportunity. The one dink in this point particularly that I'd love you to talk about because it actually set up the winner was this backhand just barely over the highest part of the net to the forehand. It's awesome. It's often very risky to dink to that forehand because it gives so many options to your opponent tell me about why you went there and then obviously it actually was a very good decision because of the next shot that came from you yeah um first of all you're absolutely right that going down the line is a risky shot it's very risky it's uh 
I would never do that on uh, on Carl and that side. If I had to play this point and Steve was at the spot of Carl and Carl at the spot of Steve, I would not have done that because I know Carl is uh, is very uh, very quick and he will he would have probably seized the opportunity to do an Ernie on that shot. And uh, now that being said, I know the quality of Steve. Steve is an unbelievable dinker, a very very good counter puncher. He's back and he's phenomenal, but uh, his, his speed is probably his weakness on, for these things, even though he has improved at it. So that's why I took the decision to go down the line because I didn't expect him to earn me. Um, and the reason also why I went down the line is to, again, to to not let them get in the groove of dinking. As you can see, I'm dinking once to Carl, once to Steve, one to Carl, one to Steve. And and that's just to, to force them to, to not get in a groove and, and pop the ball up. So I think the, the point there, and that was outstanding for our viewers to think about is, not only is the variety of moving the dink around important, but it is the opponent and what they can and cannot do that should affect your decisions. And folks, this doesn't matter what level you play at. As you get better, as you construct points, you're gonna play some people that have a much better forehand or backhand, are taller, are shorter, move better. As you heard Jay say there, there's a shot he hit in that rally, that backhand little cut dink down the line. He doesn't do if the players are switched. So really think about that when you're practicing, when you're playing your tournaments, when you're playing rec play, that the shot matters, but who is going to receive it matters just as much. Jay, that was great. Thank you, brother. Tennis players, and Jocelyn was a phenomenal tennis player as well. Tennis players are used to one-shot winners. We hit one-shot winners as tennis players a lot. Pickleball is one, two, three, and in this case, you had to hit four or five balls, but you knew what was coming next. So do you practice that, Jocelyn? What can you tell our viewers so that they can, especially the tennis players coming to this, but quite frankly, most players as they progress and get better at pickleball, how can they be ready? What can you tell them to do to get ready for that second ball, that third ball? What What do you have in your mind? I'm glad that you bring that up because that's something I always uh, talk about with the, the player I teach because um, sometimes you have a high ball and you're like, oh, that's a put away. And, and you know, you're just in the mindset that the point is over. Uh, this is something I really... Uh, struggled as a beginning as well for myself coming to tennis when I had a high ball it was a winner or or you know just a ball that was not coming back in pickleball it's a wiffle ball it's a bit slower and players have great hands so the ball always come back so I my mindset is the point is not over until it's over so you know it, I, I have to make sure that the ball is if I see, let's say, Cal running for a ball or something, I'm still going to be in the ready position because I expect them to make that ball. And that's where I think for me, in my case, my hand-eye coordination got better and my hands got quicker because I was always expecting the ball to come and not getting surprised by someone as a reflex. A lot of time I still do it. I play with um, a good 4-5 and even low 5 O's that – we have in town that are great players and they just don't expect the ball to come back. And, you know, it's just something that you have to get in your head that the ball is coming back. It's pickleball. All right, we will be right back after a few short messages from our sponsors with a gold medal mixed doubles match with Jocelyn DeVille. back and we are at the APP Cincinnati Open gold medal mixed doubles match. Let's look at another point here. Again, Pat Smith serving to you. 
Again, we're in a stacking position. So I'm going right off after my return to the left side. Uh, and that, that was again, very smart from, from Andrea to go back behind him because it led to the first um, attackable ball. And, um, and then from there, we're just being aggressive uh, again. And it, it's funny because we, we have seen this before in the previous videos, the ball is coming back. We have high balls. Uh, Andrea is the first one to be aggressive. She has a high ball. She speed at Patrick. Patrick has a great reflex. I Again, I go back at him. He has an amazing reflex. Lauren is on the defense, putting the ball high up again. So the ball is coming back. And um, and he just, he just, against good players, you have to expect that. You have to expect that. So let's talk about overheads for a minute here, because I mean, you hit a couple in this point that in tennis, a good overhead, you hit it straight down. And because of the way the ball bounces, you bounce it over the fence or it's the points over. You just can't do that. So, you know, a lot of people teach angle that ball if you can. What do you, what would you tell everybody who's watching to do with their overheads? You know, I, I like the angle the angle overhead but it's it's risky you have to remember here at that point we're in the third set um it's it's a very tight game so on the first overhead i have an easy ball to to uh to probably put away on the side but i rather go middle to force them to 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 um to hit together like you know to force them to call to to um, collapse and but they don't they're smart and they communicate well, but it's still a tough shot for them to, to reset. So I'm just expecting again to have the ball one more time to have an easier overhead and put more angle on that one. Um, but my goal at that, that moment was to hit big target to not miss overhead and to not give a point away because again, if you remember, Patrick was serving. So if I miss this overhead, we're losing a point and that's not a point you want to lose when you're in a such a favorable situation. So I'm just hitting big target and forcing them to, to do something with the ball and maybe make an amazing shot rather than to give it away. What an awesome point you brought up there that I want to make sure everyone caught that. You're receiving here. So if you hit that overhead in the net or long or wide, it's a point lost. You know, if you do that when you're serving, okay, it's a side out or second server. So do you play differently at all when you're serving versus receiving? I'm, I'm not playing too much differently. I always, my, my mindset is to be aggressive. I believe that you got to be aggressive and, uh, and it should, I rather lose being aggressive than lose by just pushing the ball in. But I am definitely maybe a bit more conservative based on the score and on where we are. At that moment, we are up in the third. We have a small lead by two points, which is, which is still big in pickleball when it's close. And I don't want to, I just don't want to lose that momentum on a ball that is easy like that one. I just don't want to take a stupid risk and give a point away on an overhead. So I'm just trying to play a bit more conservative while still putting, I'm still hitting the ball hard. I'm not just pushing it, but I'm not playing a close angle to risk it. That's what I'm trying to say. No, I think I love that. And I think, you know, our, our viewers can, can really remember some of the things you just said about their own games. Like I'm aggressive, but within reason here, down the middle, not going to go to the sideline where we are in a particular match, if it's a tournament, but just in general, that mentality is maybe a little more aggressive when we're serving because it can't hurt you and a little, just slightly safer. Aggression still wins in this game. I agree with you 100%. All right, last three points are all very similar shots. Beautiful, beautiful disguise. Walk us through these. Here we are back in the mix. So I have a high ball. I have a high ball, but it's not an easy put away. 
it's um it's a ball that is fairly high but it's not very attackable because it's high but it's still bouncing in the kitchen um so for me to hit a top spin forehand it's possible but i was expecting to have an overhead and the ball is just too low for an overhead so this is where i take the decision to to slice that ball softly to make a drop shot and and force her to move inside the net because even if she get to that ball and that's probably why she didn't run to it as well is she's most likely going to have a ball where she has to scoop it up and it's again leading to a high ball for us to have an offensive offensive shot after that and this is obviously not a replay because we're back to the men's match let's see this the so same situation again like cal cal is a very um He's very aware that his third was not good, as you can pay attention. His third was, he, he's not that his third was bad, but his third was a bit too high. So if you pay attention where he's standing, he's standing far. He didn't make the move. Normally when he has a good third, he start transitioning forward already. Here, I, 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 could, I saw that. And then I just saw him already being defensive, expecting me to be aggressive. So then from there, I take the initiative to do a drop shot. And I know also that Steve is not going to go cross court to get that ball because he expects, he knows Carl is very quick and explosive, but he expects him to move. So I think that was a great shot selection at that point because Carl is far back and, um, and Steve has no business getting that ball because it should be Carl's ball. So love this, love the breakdown. Obviously, the point here is Kyle is extremely fast, and yet this shot, when you put it into play at the right time, is very effective. Can you explain to your viewers, what are you doing mechanically? What are you doing to hit that ball? Because obviously you don't want to put that in the net. As you mentioned, you've got a ball where now you have a chance to win the point. They're both thinking you're going to hit it really hard. You give the look of that with the paddle up. Walk us through, and we'll watch it a couple times, what you're doing to make sure that you just ever so slightly, daintily put it right over that net for a one. Yeah, and, and you can see already when I'm moving forward, um, yeah, after the serve, when I return with the slice back in, I try to play deep here. And up, I see the ball high. My racket is up. My paddle is up high. And then when I see him far, I start slowly to open my hand. So I get just slightly under the ball and take off the pace. So I absorb the pace of the ball. And just with the, the fact that my racket is open towards the sky, the ball just rebounds on it and just slowly die into the kitchen. Um, and then barely bounce again because I didn't add pace. I, sh I cut the pace and I absorbed the pace. I mean, you're cradling that. I mean, that's, yeah. that's what you're telling us. You're putting yeah. that paddle to the sky. That's a great description of the shot you executed. This last one is the same shot, but it's not exactly the same shot. Let's see what you did here. Back to the mixed doubles match. Jocelyn, here it comes, take it away. Yeah, another great point. Uh, it's a great point for two reasons because it, it covers w one thing that I, that um, I did before that Patrick did. So Patrick is crossing. He's doing the same play as I did where he's earning because he knows my ball is going to go there. He's a bit unlucky because it hits the net and then I have a chance to, to, to roll an ATP on Lauren. Lauren managed to defend and then from there, very in the defensive position. When I see them far back, again, I, my goal is to make Lauren come forward here and um, reach, just scoop the ball up so I can have a put away. So I know they're very good defending players. Uh, so my goal is to make them move and hit the ball in movement. So I, they expect me to hit hard back and I'm just, um, trying to anticipate that as well. And when I see that they're far, I'm just like dropping, making sure they're coming in and get the ball I want to see. And Jocelyn, is there any difference in the execution of the volley versus in this one, it came off the bounce? Yeah, the difference is again, 
when the ball bounces, you have more time to take the information. Like what is happening? What where are the players? All from here, I have so many options. I can either go deep, short cross, middle, deep cross. You know, I have I have basically six, seven options where I can go. And so I am the ball because it bounced already lost a lot of pace. So I, I I don't have to do much. I just have to barely tap it. And I again I open my paddle a bit towards the sky. So I just have this moony ball that is just dying and and forcing them to to really rush for it and uh, and have a great it's a great shot because it's it's very hard for the opponents to read that. Well, that shot and many others that we saw enabled you and Andrea to win the gold medal at the APP Cincinnati Open. I'll tell you what I've had. I've had a blast talking to you about pickleball. Jocelyn, thanks so much for being on the show today. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Dave. And uh, hopefully another time. I, I would love to join you again. And I would love to have you. So, folks, that's Jocelyn. This is Get the Point. I'm Dave Fleming. Please go to APP TV on YouTube and subscribe. We have lots of great shows. In fact, my guest today has a new show that's coming out in a few weeks. I'm not going to spoil it, but you're going to want to look for that. Plus, we've got shows from Lauren McLaughlin, Dom Catalano. We've got coaching from a variety of the best in the game and a cooking show with Adam Stone and Corinne Carr. Thanks again so very much for watching. We had a blast. Put this into your game and get the point. Peace.